Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation to discuss those uh, two rare tumors. I um, have no disclosure for that. Um, so, thymic tumors, neuroendocrine tumors are rare tumors. The incidence is far below the ESMO cutoff to define a rare cancer, which is uh, an incidence uh, below three cases per 100,000 individuals in Europe. Uh, in France, uh, the ESMO cutoff would be uh, 1,800, and uh, we have 250 new cases for thymic tumors and about 900 lung neuroendocrine tumors, excluding small cell lung cancer. So histology is complex. It's complex for thymic tumors. We have uh, thymomas and thymic carcinomas. Carcinomas are similar to uh, lung carcinomas, and the most frequent subtype in the thymus is squamous cell carcinomas, with a specific expression at immunohistochemistry of CD117 and CD5. Thymomas are mixed tumors combining epithelial tumor cells and non-tumoral lymphocytes, and the degree of atypia, the proportion of lymphocytes, uh, and the resemblance with the normal thymic architecture defines several subtypes, type A, AB, B1, B2, and B3. Um, pathological review is good practice in rare tumors, and here is an example for thymic tumors. We have a, a network in France called Rhythmic, Nearly 300 cases reviewed by a panel of expert pathologists. And if you look at the initial diagnosis versus the final diagnosis after the pathological review, you can identify about 7% of patients for whom there was a major disagreement between the two diagnoses, leading to a change in the therapeutic strategy. For neuroendocrine tumors, we have this standard classification distinguishing well-differentiated tumors, typical carcinoids and atypical carcinoids, uh, with a, a difference based on the possible presence of focal necrosis and a higher mitotic index in atypical carcinoids. Large cell neuroendocrine carcinomas are poorly differentiated tumors with extensive necrosis and a high proliferation index. The biology of those rare tumors is very different than that of lung cancers. There are no molecular alteration on uh, kinases, but we have some uh, specific hallmarks. In thymic tumors, uh, we have mutation, which is a, a mutation in a transcription factor called GTF2I. Uh, those mutations are observed in nearly 100% of type A thymomas, and 80% of type AB thymomas. GTF2I is a transcription factor that controls cell cycles and uh, cell proliferation. A second hallmark in thymic tumors is deregulation of uh, cell cycle and apoptosis through uh, the, uh, the observation of gains in BCL2 and losses uh, at the CDKN2A uh, genes. For carcinoids, again, no molecular alteration. Similar to uh, what we have in thymic tumors, a low mutation burden, but some mutation reported in uh, genes encoding for uh, histone methylation and acetylation genes. So this may represent uh, a, a rationale for specific therapeutic uh, strategies. In thymic tumors and in neuroendocrine tumors, from a clinical standpoint, we have an association with specific disorders. Uh, in thymic tumors, autoimmune disorders, the most frequent being myasthenia gravis, pure cell aplasia, and hypogamma globulinemia. And we have a systematic screening that is recommended for those alt, uh, disorders before any uh, oncological treatment is started. And similar uh, in uh, neuroendocrine tumors, we have some associated disorders, so endocrine syndromes, carcinoid syndromes, Cushing syndromes, and again, systematic screening uh, is recommended. We may have some association with deep neck, which is a diffuse idiopathic pulmonary endocrine cells hyperplasia, producing obstructive lung disease, so patients who will present with dyspnea, uh, bronchitis uh, symptoms. And, car and carcinoid tumors are maybe associated with multiple endocrine neoplasia 
type 1, so it requires a clinical uh, uh, assessment for that and possibly a, a biological screening. What is the staging and the <coughs> prognostic factors for those rare tumors? Well, for thymic tumors, we had historically this uh, Masaoka Koga staging system. So this is a pathological uh, staging system because it requires the tumors to be resected for uh, an accurate assessment. And it, it's now being replaced by the HTNM staging, uh, which is somehow different than uh, what we had with the Masaoka staging system. It's based on the one hand of the prognosis of patient after surgical resection. And we have a, a combination <coughs> of Masaoka Koga earlier stages, stage one, two, and some stage three tumors into a single stage one group. And on the other hand, we have a better definition of what is a resectable tumor, uh, as Masaoka Koga stage three tumors are separated based on the resectability of invaded structures into stage 3A tumors and stage 3B tumors, similar to what we have in lung cancer. We have some correlation between histology and stage. Uh, type B2, B3 and thymomas and thymic carcinomas are more frequently diagnosed uh, with more advanced uh, stages. Ultimately, the most significant prognostic factor in thymic epithelial tumors is the completion of surgical resection, whatever classification is used. For neuroendocrine tumors, the recommendation is to use the uh, TNM classification for lung cancer. We have uh, a pronostic value for, for this TNM classification. But again, the most significant uh, prognostic factor is histological grade, meaning that a typical carcinoid grade one tumor uh, uh, do have a, a better outcome than atypical carcinoids and large cell neuroendocrine carcinomas. Those rare tumors do require a multidisciplinary approach. This is true for thymic tumors, and we have all the, the need uh, facing a mediastinal mass to make the differential diagnosis with other primary mediastinal tumors, gem cell tumors, uh, Hodgkin, non-Hodgkin lymphomas, and uh, it may be challenging. We need to uh, look at biomarkers, to look at clinical signs and large lymph nodes, B symptoms and so on. Uh, I've not have time to, to, to further discuss that, but ultimately a surgical biopsy uh, uh, is often needed to make the differential diagnosis. For neuroendocrine tumors, again, multidisciplinary approach, uh, pretty similar to what we have for lung cancer, chest CT scan, bronchoscopy, percutaneous biopsy possibly, and some specific uh, 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 workup, uh, especially for nuclear imaging, PET CT scan, FDG PET CT scan may be useful, but more specific uh, is the use of Octreo scan or uh, Dota uh, TOC PET CT, which is specific for neuroendocrine uh, cells and has a better resolution than uh, Octreo scan. The management of endocrine syndromes in uh, neuroendocrine tumors is key before the oncological management is uh, started, and we have some recommendation here in the uh, ESMO guidelines. The management of thymic tumors and neuroendocrine tumors is a multimodal treatment, and surgery is clearly uh, the backbone of this uh, strategy. Surgery clearly drives the, the algorithm in thymic tumors because it's the most significant prognostic factor. So on the one hand, you have surgically resectable tumors with a upfront surgery and locally advanced tumors which are, are not resectable and you will start the strategy with induction chemotherapy. We have some recommendation for the surgical management of thymic tumors. Median sternotomy is clearly the standard approach. We require a complete thymotymomectomy, including the tumor, the normal thymus, and the mediastinal fat. <coughs> With a new TNM staging system, mediastinal nodes, sampling, or reduction is recommended. Minimally invasive surgery is uh, now increasing, and uh, more and more 
uh, surgical teams are, are using minimally invasive approaches for small tumors which do not present with uh, vascular invasion. Surgery is key also in neuroendocrine tumors, carcinoid tumors. Uh, this is true for typical carcinoids, atypical carcinoids. Lobectomy uh, is, a, is a standard uh, procedure, similar to what we have for lung cancer. Um, clearly, in uh, this uh, European cohort of patients, lobectomy was the most uh, frequent procedure. Nomonectomy is uh, required in about 15% of, uh, of patients. Again, uh, uh, other approaches are, are possible. Bronchoplastic resection, uh, as well as subglobal resection, which may be sufficient for carcinoid tumors, but uh, it's a matter of debate among surgical teams. Uh, possibly uh, subglobal resection are uh, suitable for typical carcinoids, but the challenge is to have uh, the diagnosis before surgery, which may be difficult on small biopsies. After surgery, the major question is post-operative treatment. Uh, for thymic tumors, we have recurrences that may occur in invasive thymomas, in thymic carcinomas, in about 30% of uh, patients. Clearly, we have some data, retrospective data, showing that post-operative radiotherapy uh, is associated with a better survival than uh, 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 follow-up, but at the end, we need to keep in mind that the majority of recurrences in thymomas occur in the pleura and not in the mediastinum where you apply post-operative radiotherapy. So this is why we have this complex algorithm in the ESMO guidelines based on histology, thymoma or thymic carcinoma, resection status, and stage. This is complex, but at the end, the objective is to have cohort of patients which are treated the same way in the same situation, and obviously this will require some uh, assessment. For neuroendocrine tumors, carcinoid tumors, uh, typical carcinoid usually do not require any uh, post-operative treatment, but for atypical carcinoid, this is a, again a matter of uh, debate. In the uh, American guidelines, uh, there is a recommendation for post-operative chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which is not really the, the standard practice uh, in, uh, in Europe. Usually, after a complete resection of uh, an atypical carcinoid tumor, we uh, do not apply uh, post-operative mm -hmm. chemotherapy. Moving to more advanced uh, disease and systemic uh, treatments. So, for thymic tumors, induction chemotherapy is standard uh, for patients with non-resectable tumors. Uh, the standard regimen is CAP. Uh, here are the data from the French uh, network. 76% uh, uh, of uh, patients treated with CAP. High response rate, 80%. It was a, a surprise for us, but it's the figure that is reported in other series in the literature. Uh, clearly, this allows resection in about 60% of patients, with a complete resection is in about half of the patients. Exclusive chemotherapy may be used in the setting of uh, refractory tumors. Again, intracycline-based regimens seems to provide with uh, a higher response rates than non-antracycline-based regimens, such as platinetoposide or carboplatin paclitaxel. Actually, looking at the uh, rhythmic uh, data, you can see that uh, multiple chemotherapy regimens are used in the setting of recurrent uh, disease. Carboplatin paclitaxel is clearly a, a second line option in, uh, in this cohort. Um, the response rate is pretty low, around 15 to 20 percent, but stabilization is obtained in, uh, in about uh, 40 percent of the patients. Progression-free survival ranges from six to seven months in those uh, patients. Exclusive chemotherapy has been used also in the setting of neuroendocrine tumors, uh, but again, limited number of patients, uh, very low response rate. So clearly, chemotherapy is not the option, uh, the first option for uh, advanced neuroendocrine uh, tumors. Uh, uh, here we have some data. Uh, recent data with oxaliplatin uh, 
based uh, regimen, so Folfox, Gmox, uh, and you can see that the results are pretty good in terms of disease control rate, obtained in about 80%. So if you have a rapidly progressive carcinoid metastatic uh, tumors, probably Folfox or Gmox are the, the, the chemotherapy regimens that may provide with uh, uh, some disease control. Actually, for neuroendocrine tumors, the first uh, line uh, treatment may be somatostatin analogs, and this is true for slow-growing tumors and possibly some uh, more progressive disease uh, before uh, chemotherapy. We have data from gastrointestinal neuroendocrine tumors, uh, so the PROMID and the uh, 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 clarinet uh, trials, you can see that you have a benefit in terms of progression-free survival with somatostatin analogs, both in secreting and non-secreting tumors, which are octroscan uh, positive. We have a trial that is uh, ongoing for lung neuroendocrine tumors, assessing somatostatin analog non-reotide versus placebo in this setting of uh, uh, slow progressive uh, disease. The second option uh, uh, regarding uh, systemic treatment for neuroendocrine tumors is Everolimus. We have data from the Radion 4 trial, which uh, was published uh, last year. So we are in the setting of gastrointestinal and lung advanced uh, neuroendocrine tumors. About 30% of the patients enrolled in this trial had uh, lung carcinoid uh, tumors, and it was a placebo control study reporting on a benefit in terms of progression free survival 14 months with Everolimus versus 5 months with placebo, leading to an overall survival benefit. So, Everolimus is now approved for the treatment of lung metastatic uh, carcinoid uh, tumors. The trial is uh, ongoing, the LUNA trial, comparing the two strategies, somatostatin analog, everolimus, or the combination of somatostatin analogs plus everolimus. So probably we can uh, have first-line treatment with somatostatin analogs, then everolimus, and then chemotherapy. But again, in a rapidly progressive disease, you may choose uh, Folfox or Gmox upfront if you want to have an aggressive uh, first-line treatment for those patients. Is there room for targeted agents? Yes. In thymic tumors, uh, we have a subset of thymic carcinomas, about 10% of thymic carcinomas, which are bore uh, KIT-activating mutations, predicting the efficacy of KIT inhibitors. So in the setting of advanced disease, genotyping of KIT uh, gene may be recommended. But actually, we have also an efficacy of sunitinib in the setting of KIT wild-type tumor, and this may be related to the anti-angiogenic effect of sunitinib with uh, some reported uh, stabilization uh, of the disease, uh, leading to PFS ranging from seven to eight months in the setting of refractory tumors. Actually, in the French network, Rhythmic, uh, we treated uh, about 30 patients, and the results are not that good, uh, possibly because we enrolled patients with uh, more advanced disease as compared to uh, the phase two trial. What are the innovative approaches? Well, we have uh, some data in thymic tumors with histone desacetylase inhibitors, and uh, as a single agent or in combination with chemotherapy, this may represent an option. And histone desacetylase inhibitors may also be uh, assessed in uh, neuroendocrine tumors based on the recent results of the molecular uh, characterization. We have some data with uh, PD1, PDL1 inhibitors. First, pembrolizumab, a phase two study reported at the last ASCO meeting in a cohort of 30 patients with thymic carcinoma, 24% response rate, so this is not too bad, but we have 30% of patients who developed uh, autoimmune disorders, such as myocarditis, myositis, and uh, pemphigus, so the toxicity is clearly uh, an issue uh, uh, in, the, in the setting of thymic carcinomas. We have also some data in thymomas with avelumab, 
phase one study, seven patients. You can see that three patients had a major response after the first injections of avelumab, but then a rapidly progressive disease as the treatment was associated again with a high rate of severe toxicity leading to discontinuation of the treatment. So clearly the use of PD-1, PD-L1 inhibitors is not recommended in thymic uh, tumors, but we have a trial and uh, uh, hopefully the trial will uh, open soon in multiple centers uh, within uh, ETOP and EORTC uh, uh, groups. Uh, this is a study assessing nivolumab in type B3 thymomas and thymic carcinomas, and then possibly moving to a combination with nivolumab and ipilimumab. So these tumors are rare tumors, and clearly we need to develop some collaborations. We have collaborations through guidelines, the ESMO uh, guidelines. We have some ESMO guidelines for thymic tumors. We have some ESMO guidelines for uh, pulmonary neuroendocrine tumors. Still, we need to keep in mind that the levels of evidence are far lower than what we have for lung cancer and even mesothelioma. We only have prospective, retrospective studies and uh, uh, expert uh, opinion. What is the model uh, for the management of patients? Well, uh, the French model is that of a network of expert centers, so 14 centers in France. It's mandatory for all patients with thymic tumors to be discussed at, um, to be uh, treated and discussed at a multidisciplinary tumor board, a single MTB, uh, which is a national MTB, twice a month. Uh, using a, a web conferencing system. So all the patients are uh, discussed uh, at the same expert tumor board. We have a pathology panel to review all the, all the cases, a tumor bank, and uh, hopefully we, we have a prospective database to assess uh, uh, the outcome of patient. This model is now adopted by uh, the European uh, Union through the uh, support of European ne reference networks. And Euracon uh, has just been approved as the European reference network for uh, rare cancers, including rare thoracic cancers. So hopefully this model of uh, developing um, networks for the management of patients and the development of re research will be uh, uh, also uh, uh, implemented at the European uh, level. I thank you for your attention.